Hey there guys, welcome to Anthony Reviews, where Anthony reviews, and with it being the end of 2023, it is that time, the time to do the top 10 figures of the year. Now, of course, these are new figures that I got over the years, so nothing from 2022 or anything like that, and these are all my personal picks, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into the list. So at number 10, we have Transformers Legacy Tarn. Now, Tarn is a character that really got, you know, popular in the IDW era of the comic books, and, you know, I don't think it's a character we never really saw in other forms of media. You know, it was until recent that we got him in the Cyberverse cartoon, and as of here, we have an action figure of him. Now, I know that, you know, Tarn is a bit of a an edgelord, I guess. You know, he's not everyone's favorite character, but for this guy, with just how articulated he is, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's got that vibe of just buying a six-inch action figure, which I think is great. I think that helps the figure quite a bit. You can get him in some pretty wild sort of, uh, some poses here, and I think that's, that's part of the reason why this guy is as high as he is. Like, it's a character that I never really thought I'd see in action figure form, and he's here, and he's great. Um, obviously they came out with a bludgeon with a similar body, which is also good, so a shout out to him, but for the list particular, decided to go with Legacy Tarn. Then coming in at number 9, a figure that I'm sure will be on no one else's top 10 of the year, we have the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Two-Faced Batman. Now this one is a bit more just of a personal taste for me. There's a lot of Batman figures that came out this year from a lot of different companies. McFarlane themselves put out quite a few Batmans, and obviously a Harvey Dent Two-Face as Batman, a little bit sort of out of the norm, if you will. But as someone who was getting into comics around sort of the late 2000s, early 2010s, really more so early 2010s, storylines like Battle for the Cow just sort of have a, a special place in my heart. I remember reading comics and looking at the DC Direct figure and seeing this design and being so caught off guard of like, wow, it's like so obviously Two-Face, but it's Two-Face's Batman. And that's really it. I just have a soft spot for this particular design. So to see it in sort of a modern action figure with sort of modern articulation and everything, like the face sculpt is really good. I'm a big fan of that face sculpt with the sort of destroyed two-face side and everything. Like, it's great. His hand has a sort of coin sculpted into it, and he came with alternate hands. I just think he's a cool alternate Batman. When we get so many Batmans, you know, every year, it's just an onslaught of Batman figures. And to be fair, I buy my fair share, but it's cool to get some different versions, some alterations to the classic outfit. And so with this one, with his crazy cape and colors and all that, it makes my top 10. For number eight, we do have another villain. I didn't really realize just how many villains were sitting at the bottom half of this top 10, but either way, this is the Jack-specific Super Mario Brothers movie Bowser. And I mean, I, I'm a Mario guy. I got a lot of the Mario movie figures. And so to have Bowser, you know, the Mario villain, Mario's main antagonist, is just like ignoring the Mario movie fact, because I enjoyed the Mario movie. I like Jack Black. I like the Peaches song and everything, but just as a Bowser toy, he looks great. Is it a one-to-one -to, -one to the games? I'm sure there's some little details you can kind of uh, have discrepancies about, but just as Bowser, like this is the guy. He looks great. He's big. He's hefty. He's articulated. You know, he's got so much going on. He's got the feature where you can pour uh, like a droplet of water and then he sort of breathes, you know, quote unquote fire, it's just sort of water vapor, but it's got a light in there and everything. Like, this is just, as a guy who's been playing Mario and Smash Brothers and all these things for most of my life, it is cool to have a sort of just definitive, chunky Bowser figure. So that's, that's why I made the top 10. It's just, it's Bowser. He looks great. For number seven, we are continuing that villain motif with the Super 7 G.I. Joe Ultimate's Cobra Commander. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you'll probably know that I'm a Cobra Commander guy. He's my favorite G.I. Joe character. And while I wasn't super familiar with the Super 7 Ultimates figures, you know, I had done a review of Ghost Starscream before last year, and then my girlfriend has picked up a few of the Alice in Wonderland stuff. Either way, I'm not super familiar, but when they were doing this with these sort of cartoon stylings, you know, the sunbow look and everything... I knew I had to get it. So, with this figure, I like it. I like it quite a bit. I love the sort of pink wired cape. I love the accessories he comes with. He comes with a lot. Um, it's not a perfect figure. You know, being a fan of Classified, it's a bit more of what I'm looking for, but in terms of that cartoon representation, 
this guy nails it. You know, does he come with a hood? No. Are all the accessories, you know, like things you need? No, it's a little bit of a higher price point. But on the shelf, seeing this guy, you can hear that Chris Lotta voice in your head. It's just, it's what I want. Like I said, it's that Cobra Commander vibe, and he fits it well enough. At least well enough to make the list. I mean, number seven is not bad. For number six, finally breaking the sort of villain trend that we have here, we have the Marvel Legends Spider-Man No Way Home Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. I think it's also called the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. It's Spider-Man. This is my childhood Spider-Man. You know, as someone who grew up, you know, born in the 90s and then really lived most of their life through the 2000s, this is my Superman 1978. You know, this is my Batman 89. These films are what I think of when I think of superhero films. Spider-Man 2002 is my favorite superhero movie. So to get a figure of Tobey Maguire is just is just great. Is this a perfect figure by any means? No. You know, it, it takes more inspiration, obviously, from the No Way Home suit, which is a little bit different from Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 and so on and so forth. But, I mean, the Tobey Maguire likeness is great. The suit looks good. In hand, it actually looks a lot better than I think it does in photos. So, I mean, I dig it. I really, I really do. To have a nice-looking Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, that's all I really wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I even bought the other figures, but ultimately, this was the one. If I had just gotten this, I think I would have been happy with it. And, I mean, I am. He made the list. He deserves it. He's great. This video is brought to you in part by Hobby Link Japan. If you're a fan of things like Super Sentai or just Japanese media in general, why don't you check out Hobby Link Japan? They've got figures, statues, and a whole horde of different kind of collectibles. Click the link down in the description below to check out Hobby Link Japan today. Alright, we're here at the top 5 and here we have G.I. Joe Classified Shipwreck. Now, G.I. Joe Classified, I really, I could have picked any figure they had made this year. There were so many good figures. The Cobra Eel, all the stuff that came with the Hiss Tank, obviously. Like, there was so much this year, it was hard to sort of pick one. But Shipwreck, I mean, it's Shipwreck. He's iconic. If you're a fan of the Real American Hero cartoon from the 80s, like I am, Shipwreck is one of the best characters in that show. He's just so memorable. He's got sort of a, a fun sort of attitude. It's it's great. So to get a classified figure that really does bring that that vibe is that, that I was looking for really is great. You know, he comes with Polly and everything. He's got tattoos on him. He got, you know, a bunch of accessories and everything. It's just, it, it's what I wanted. That's really what it comes down to. Very much like the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. I pictured a figure in my head and I got it. And that's really great. As I stated before, I think if you picked any of the G.I. Joe classified figures that came out this year, well, mostly any, I think that would be a great choice to have on a top 10. But for me personally, as someone who's been wanting Shipwreck since Wave 1, and now we finally got him, I'm very happy with the way that he turned out. For number 4, a figure that will probably be in a lot of people's 2024 list. You know, that's when the figure was supposed to come out, and that's probably when most people are going to get him. But for me... I got Transformers Legacy Animated Universe Optimus Prime this month. And I know that's really recent. You know, it's kind of crazy to put a figure that you got so recently on your top 10. But I, I really like Transformers Animated. I really like that version of Optimus Prime. And while not all of the legacy interpretations of previous universes have been perfect, they've been good and they've been getting better. And I feel like this one is a really, really nice translation into the new sort of generalized G1-esque format. So, I mean, yeah, I know I did a video on him recently. I did an unboxing on him. So if you want to see sort of my first impressions of it, feel free to check that out. But I mean, summarizing it here, he looks great. You know, he's, he's like, it's just a good representation of that animated Optimus Prime. He's got all the sort of details in the right places and the face looks good and he comes with his axe and everything. So yeah, he's just a good translation. And I'm very, very happy with that. For number three, we have the SH Figure Arts Bandai Spirits Kuwagata Oger. So, for those of you who are unaware, this is from the current Super Sentai series over in Japan, Osama Sentai King Oger. This is sort of their Red Ranger, if you will, if you want to translate it into Power Rangers terms. Uh, Gira here, one of the, uh, I guess, kings of the royal 
King Sentai, King Oger. And I mean, it's a show that I've been watching. This is actually one of the first times I've watched a Sentai as it aired, week to week. And I really come to like this character. So to have this sort of import figure, this super articulated, just awesome, awesome version of a, of a you know, it, for all intents and purposes, sort of Power Rangers-esque character, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, when I handle import figures sometimes, because I don't get a lot, you know, when I handle import figures sometimes, it makes me wonder why I'm buying other figures in a way. <laughs> I know I know that kind of sounds like I'm sort of dissing a lot of uh, Western market action figures, but I, I mean, he's just, he's just so posable, you know? Like, you can do so much, and I, I, I love that. Um, he's at number three because this cape works but if it was a cloth cape, you could probably get it doing a lot more of what you you need, right? Like, I feel like if it was sort of a cloth cape, you could have this doing a bit more. So when it's rubber, not exactly ideal, but it works, I guess, for what it is. It's not perfect, but, I mean, still looks good. And And so, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get this figure, and then I got it, and then I, I fell in love with it. So, Kuwagata Oger, the Red Ranger, like I said, to kind of use a term that we'd recognize. Number three on my list. For number two here, I mean, the Marvel Legends blob figure is just so, so good. I'm a Marvel Legends guy, I'm an X-Men guy, and the blob is a character that, obviously, we've been needing for a long, long time. We've gotten one before... It was good for what it was, but now with this one, I mean, he's just so great. <laughs> I mean, he's perfect. The amount of detailing all over the skin and everything, and the amount of articulation that you can get on him here. Like, the fact that you can get him sort of up and, like, running and everything is, is pretty great. Like, he's a big guy. Like, you shouldn't be able to get this much, or, like, articulation out of them, but you do, and I mean, it's great. Look how much, like, character he has. I mean, look at him. Look at that face. How can you not love that face? I don't know. I, I don't really have proper sort of words to describe just how good he is, because he just, he's what I wanted. You know, that's kind of a lot of these figures, where they were figures that I was expecting, anticipating, and when they came out, they really lived out of my expectations. And something like here, like with the blob, actually surpassed my expectations, so that's why he's so high on the list. The blob is iconic. Let's go look at, I mean, come on. Look at that. Okay, for number one, it's tough. So this year, because of Rise of the Beasts and everything, I really went all in on Optimus Primal. Optimus Primal has been a character that I've really enjoyed over the years, but with the movie and all the new toys, it really forced me to kind of dig in, I would say. And so this year gave us a lot of new Optimus Primal figures. You know, we've got the sort of Yellow Park model kit here, which is super articulated. Like, he's got so much going on. I, I love that for him. You know, I think that's, that's great. And then we've got the sort of, like, Takara exclusive one here, which just feels so toyetic with the sort of missile firing and the, the pop-out weapons here and his size. Like... It's not very screen accurate, but I don't need it to be. Like I said, there's just something so satisfying about holding this guy. He's so sturdy. He's so solid. And I mean, he's just hes just cool. He's got that toyetic factor that the other figures don't really have. And then you get the Studio Series figure. And I mean, like, this is the guy. This is the guy from the movie. He's got good proportions. He's got the sort of open sort of face mask there and... Like, he looks good. I was a little worried about the color differences between, like, the black fur and the more gray. It almost looked a little bit, like, tan in, like, certain pictures, but he looks good. Like, he cuts a good silhouette. This is probably the one I should pick, right? Like, it's the most accurate. It's It's got that leader sort of scale price point. It's a good figure. So between them and the other ones I didn't even count, like, it's really, really hard to decide which Optimus Primal I should pick. So because of that, I'm picking the sort of smash and change, because that's really the best one here. So there you go, guys. These are my top 10 figures of 2023. 
If you guys have any of the same figures on your list, or maybe there's some other figures in the same lines that you guys like to let me know about down below in the comments, please let me know. I would love to hear what your favorite figures are and if any of these match up. Uh, feel free to check out some of my other reviews on my channel. I've got some of these, like I did an unboxing of Animated Optimus Prime. I did a review of Cobra Commander here. I did an unboxing of a bunch of Optimus Primal figures and other Transformers stuff on my channel earlier in the year. So like I said, feel free to check out all that. Uh, subscribe for future videos. Of course, I'll have tons of new videos out in the new year. So if you enjoyed this, feel free to stick around if you'd like. I'm at Anthony Lantern on Instagram, Twitter, Letterboxd. If you see Anthony Lantern, that's probably me. But thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.